Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Plainville Athletic Complex as we bring you Hopkinton Hillers playoff softball. And today, the 13th seeded Hopkinton Hillers are taking on third seeded King Phillip here at the Plainville Athletic Complex. It is a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Temperatures in the high 70s. Tom Nappy alongside Larry Sacklad for the broadcast. And Deborah Nappy is going to help out with camera work today. Let's get right to the lineups. We'll start off with the visiting Hopkinton Hillers. Pitching and batting first is Emily Whalen. Batting second, playing shortstop Alyssa McIntyre. The center fielder, Katie Holly, is hitting third, hitting cleanup. And playing third base, Emma Murphy, Jill Cedia, the catcher, batting fifth. Bella Ansi, the first baseman, hitting sixth. Megan Sullivan, the second baseman, hitting seventh. Batting eighth and playing right field, Jordan Chevery. And batting ninth and playing left field is Kristen McCluskey. Larry, how about that King Phillip defense? Well, the Warriors will have Jessica Bonner at third, Megan Gorman at shortstop, Haley McCaslin at second base, Brooke Totte at first base, Faith Terenisi in left. How do I do on that one? Good. Sidney Phillips or Sid Phillips in center field and Nicole Carter in right. On the mound is Elise Pereira and behind the plate, Brianna Lacey. It is the fourth seeded King Phillip Warriors and the 13th seeded Hopkinton Hillers. And both teams ready for this battle here today. And it should be a very good pitching matchup between Emily Whalen and Elise Pereira. Elise Pereira, one of the better pitchers in the state for King Phillip. And we'll get you some stats on her in just a moment as King Phillip has taken the field and they are just about ready to go. And King Phillip also has a number of great hitters in the lineup that are at the top of their division. Well, we won't see a Kelly Nelson performance today, not 19 strikeouts. Welcome back to Hopkinton Hillers softball on HCAM. Emily Whalen is stepping to the plate to face Elise Pereira for King Phillip. And she's actually not the number one pitcher in the King Phillip lineup, but getting the start here today. The number one pitcher, Faith Turanis, is playing left field today. Is Whalen fouls that one away. It's an 0 and 1 count. I think King Phillip has done their scouting. Both the corner infielders are playing in for a bunt with Emily. Swing strike. I think it was a ball, Tom. I think she pulled back. Oh. I could be wrong as usual. My view was briefly obstructed. Tell the coach it was to get a ball, out of the way. One and one. As this is hit up the first base side and foul. Looks like the catcher, Lacey, might take away the run game. She's got a very strong arm from behind the plate. And there's strike three. It looks like we'll have to move down a little bit, Larry. Got a lot of uh, traffic in our way today. And that'll bring up Alyssa McIntyre. The sophomore. And there's a ball to Alyssa McIntyre. Nice thing about this Hillers team is they only have one senior retiring should they go down and defeat today. Up the middle, back to the pitcher, throw to first, no problem, two away. The rest are all underclassmen. Yep, they will have a, certainly a, a solid roster next season. That's for sure. And I don't think there was huge expectations heading into this season. A lot of people were questioning if the Hillers would make the playoffs with such a young team, but they certainly have shown they have a whole lot of talent as this is hit in the air. Two center field catches made. That'll retire the top half of the first to the bottom of the inning we go. We are scoreless here at the Plainville Athletic Complex. It's Hopkinton Hillers playoff softball on HCAM. Bottom of the first inning, King Phillip coming up to the plate. Let's take a look at the King Phillip lineup. Hitting first, playing center field is Sidney Phillips. The second baseman, Haley McCashland, is batting second and playing second base. Batting third is Megan Gorman, the shortstop. 
hitting cleanup playing left field, Faith Turanisi, as there's a strike one. Elise Pereira, the pitcher batting fifth, Jessica Bonner, the third baseman hitting sixth, Brooke Tott, the first baseman hitting seventh, Brianna Lacey, the catcher hitting eighth, and Nicole Carter, the right fielder, hitting ninth for King Phillip. Sydney Phillips will step back in. It's an 0-2 count. Larry, how about that Hiller's defense? Sure. We'll go Emma Murphy at third base. Alyssa McIntyre at shortstop. Megan Sullivan at second base. Bella Ansi at first base. Krista McCluskey left field. Katie Hawley in center. Jordan Chevary in right field. Jill Sidia behind the plate catching Emily Whalen. And this is up the third base side, glove by the third baseman and foul. Well, we'll have to keep our eyes open today, Larry. Yeah, yeah. Looked like Carter was out ahead of the very first pitch. I don't know what she saw from Emily Whalen. The 0-2 pitch. And this is up the third base side out of the reach of Emma Murphy. Emily Murphy, uh, Emma Murphy's got a grad party today. The only senior. We weren't invited, Tom, so. I know. Uh, our invitations must have got lost in the mail. Whalen deals. And this is hit high in the air, third base side, in fair territory, and caught by Emma Murphy. One away. That'll bring up Haley McCashlin, the second baseman. Defense has been the name of the game for the Hillers all season long. They were expecting. Julia De Benedetto to be the starting pitcher for most of the season, but they've rode Emily Whalen and Katie Hawley. There's a strike. Emily Whalen, a junior, five and two on the mound, 11 appearances, 11 games started, a 3.73 ERA. She has struck out 21 hitters and has been very good on the mound as of late. And I think her pitching has certainly improved throughout the season, Larry. Well, it definitely has. Um, She's a threat on the base pass. We nicknamed her Flash last game. And she's a control pitcher. She's going to pitch the contact. She's not going to blow people away. And this is up the middle. Pass to reach away. And the second baseman grabs it. Throw to first. No problem. Two away. It wouldn't totally surprise me if today ends up being a pitcher's duel. Well, let's hope for a pitcher's duel and the Hillers come on the come on out on top. And now stepping into the batter's box for King Phillip, one of the best hitters in the Hockamock, Megan Gorman, 517 batting average on the year. 29 runs batted in, two homers. She presents Emily a little challenge being such a small girl. Swinging strike. Nice pitch by Whalen there, one and one. She just waved at that pitch and it was Byer. And she gets a piece of this up the middle, glove by the shortstop, throw to first, no problem. One, two, three, they go, and we are scoreless. After one inning of play, you are tuned in to Hopkinton Hiller's softball on HCAN. Top of the second inning, the Hillers stepping back up to the plate. As this is hit high in the air, and caught, actually, in foul territory, one away. Emma got a nice piece of that one. Went first pitch swinging. That'll bring up Jill Cedia, the catcher. One pitch, one out for the Hillers. Jill Cedia has three home runs on the air, I think. One and oh count on Cedia. Jill a 345 batting average on the season. Sw strike two there. Ooh, did you feel that breeze? What a cut. Yeah, that was a good cut. She has four homers, six doubles, 28 runs driven in, eight scored. I think the Hillers were scouted. The outfielders are playing way past their bare spot out in the outfield where they normally play. Count is one and two on Cedia. If Jill Cedia gets on, look for Heather Sivo to pinch run for her. Swinging strike, and she goes down two away. Yeah. 
That'll bring up Bella Ansi, the first baseman. She tends to go to the left side, rarely pulls the ball. Ball one. And that's where the outfield is playing her, shading her towards the third base line. And Over here. Hit in the air foul. Windshield action. Oh. Got two strikes on Bella Anzi. No, one and one. That one low, two and one. I don't know what the rationale for King Phillip, given that it's a single elimination game, throwing their number two pitcher, the check. One and two. They call the strike on that one, the first base umpire. I don't know how he could see the end of the bat. I saw the end of the bat and she didn't, she did not go around. Right up here on the pitch. That is low, two and two. Counts full. Oh, thank like you. Trying you, to multitask a little bit here. Oh, you're doing <laughs> everything today, except serving hot dogs. Up the left side, that gets through for a base hit, and it is going to be a one out or two out single for Ansi. And I'll bring up Megan Sullivan, the second baseman. Where did I tell you she hits the ball, the left side? She certainly did. Right in the hole between third and short. Got a good piece of that. Outside, 1-0. and oh. The umpires will have a tight strike zone today. Fouled into the backstop. One and one. Megan Sullivan, a sophomore, hitting a 261 on the season. She's, She's played, played some outfield and reliable second base. Certainly is. One and two. Way out in front of that pitch. Jordan Chavary on deck. Should Megan get on? That one is low, two and two. What'd you think of that pitch, Tom? Pretty solid pitch. Swinging strike, and that will retire the side. In the top of the second to the bottom of the inning we go. It's a scoreless game on HCAM. Bottom of the second inning, due up for King Phillip, four, five, and six. Faith Turnese, Elise Pereira, and Jessica Bonner. Faith Turnese, an elite pitcher for King Phillip in left field today. She's built the same way Emily Whalen is. Emily Whalen set to deal. This is hit high in the air, and it is caught in left field, one away. One pitch, one out. That's what we like. That's what you need. And that will bring up Elise Pereira. Today's pitcher. There's a strike, 0 and 1. The umpire behind the plate is pretty vocal. At least we can know whether it's a ball or a strike. That one up high. One and one. And this is hit towards us. One and two. Did you bring your glove by any chance? I Larry? did. Oh, I, well, <laughs> you have to ask your uh, your wife there whether she brought her glove. Wind up and the pitch. Outside. Two and two. I'd rather get hit by a softball any day than a baseball. That is true, as this is hit in the air over to left field and caught. Two away. 
Emily Whalen making quick work out of the Warriors lineup today. I'm sensing a pitcher's duel here. All right, all right. We'll hold you to it. I'll bring up Jessica Bonner, the third baseman. Outside. One and oh. It's gotta be nice for both coaches to know that they have a pitcher in their back pocket should anyone get in trouble. Two and oh. Good take by Bonner. That's fouled into the backstop. Two and one. Definitely didn't have the take sign on that pitch. She was swinging. Really nice complex down here, Tom. Certainly is. Jessica Bonner hitting a 446 on the season as she drives this one over to center field. And it is caught for the third and final out of the bottom of the second to the top of the third we go. We are scoreless on H cam. Top of the third inning. Right now, a pitcher's duel going on between King Phillip and Hopkinton. Eight, nine, and one do up for the Hillers. Jordan Chevery, Kristen McCluskey, and Emily Whalen. Let's take a look at the South Division I softball bracket. The winner of this game advances to take on the winner of Walpole and Somerset Berkeley. And then uh, also on this side of the bracket, the winner of Marshfield and Plymouth North takes on the winner of North Attleboro and Braintree. On the other side of the bracket, you got the winner of Taunton and North Quincy taking on the winner of Silver Lake and Dartmouth. And the winner of Milford and Bishop Fian taking on the winner of Bridgewater, Raynham and Natick. Jordan Chevery, the right fielder, will step in. Seems to be some communication between the home plate umpire and the first base umpire. There's a strike. Jordan Chevery, a sophomore, hitting a 207. She has been pretty solid in the outfield. Swinging strike there. 0 oh 2. Just swung over that pitch. She got a nice swing, though. She'll be working on that over the winter. And there's strike three. That'll bring up Kristen McCluskey, the left fielder. Looks like home plate umpire and the first base umpire are going to have another conference. I don't, know what, I don't know what it's all about, though. Klusky steps in. There's a strike. So that was right down Broadway. Chris McCluskey, a freshman, hitting a 378 on the season. Six runs scored, six driven in. That's great for a, pr a freshman. Certainly 370s. is. 370s. Couldn't hold her swing there, 0 and 2. And I got to say, Elise Pereira dealing out there today for King Phillip. Nothing's going to be wind dated today. The flag is just hanging straight. Strike three, two away. Two straight strikeouts for Pereira. And that is her sixth strikeout of the game. Here comes her opposite number, Emily Whalen. Always a threat to bunt. A speed demon. Bush will run up to, bump, to hit, slap it like that. Gets a piece of this one, and it's gloved by the second baseman. Throw to first, no problem. Four to three for the third out of the top of the third. To the bottom of the inning we go. We're scoreless on H cam. Bottom of the third inning. A good pitcher's duel going on here. And one thing that these two teams have in common, Hopkinton and King Phillip, is they both feature a couple of very good pitchers that they can throw out in the circle. King Phillip has Faith Turanese, who is 5-0 oh with a .61 ERA, and Elise Pereira, today's starter, 13 wins, 3 losses, 98 innings pitched, a 242 ERA. Elise Pereira has actually gotten the majority of the work from the pitcher's circle, but 
this season, they also discovered that they have another great pitcher in Faith Turanisi. And they uh, plan on using her for the next couple of seasons. How many, how many innings has Miss Terranese pitched this year? 34.2, 34 and two thirds. As this is hit over to the left field fence, that's off the fence. A little bit of trouble in the outfield getting to it, nearly a home run. And it's a leadoff single for Brooke Tott, the first baseman. And that was a good piece of hitting. And if you're over at Hopkinton High School, that's easily a double, but it took a big bounce off that left field fence. That was on a line for sure. There was no chance for the left fielder on that play. Brianna Lacey steps in, the bunt, and it is foul. Smart play by Emma Murphy. Ball spinning, sees it goes outside the baseball and picks it up outside the baseline and picks it up. Signs coming in from the third base coach, whether they're gonna have a hit and run on. As this is driven up the left side, that'll get in the left field, and that is going to be a little bit of trouble out there. The lead runner advancing to third, and that is going to be a stand-up double for Brianna Lacey, the catcher. And that'll bring up Nicole Carter, the right fielder. So here comes the King Phillip bats. Two hard hit balls right in a row. We have a pinch hitter in here or a pinch runner? We got a pinch runner. Coming in a pinch run, that is Marjorie Gurrier. So Marjorie Gurrier in there to pinch run for the catcher, Brianna Lacey. Nicole Carter, the right fielder, stepping in. Infield is in for Hopkinton. They're going to cut the ball off at the plate. Gets a piece of this one up the right side. whalen has got it, and she's gonna throw to third. Nearly got, and they did, they got the lead runner. No, no, they called her safe. Well, I don't know about that one. I wanna review the tape, but they You go review safe. the tape. Well, that's gonna be bases loaded, but I think that was the right move by Whalen because you throw to first, that run's scoring. What'd you think, Larry? I, well, honestly. Honestly. She was safe. Okay. That was close, very close. But being the homer I am, she's out of here. <laughs> Back to the bench. And there she goes. So she is out. So they changed the call. They called her out. Could be a row going on here between the third base coach and the home plate umpire. Hey, told you. Yep. <laughs> Situation. They initially called her out and then changed the call to safe, and now they change it back to an out. So there's one away now with a runner on second. That was a big play by Emily Whalen. Yeah, that was a contact play. The runner was going all the way. As this is hit in the air over to left field, that is going to land fair. Lead runner being waved around. Here she comes, and she will score. It's a 1-0 King Phillip lead, an RBI single for Nicole Carter. All the balls this inning have been hit pretty hard, except the one back to Emily Whalen. Joe Seedy is going to have a little chat with Emily. That was actually. Now stepping in is Haley McCashlin. That was actually Sydney Phillips with the RBI single. Excuse me. Billy McCashlin will step in. There's she ran up to bunt and pulled it back. So two runners on for King Phillip, one in. There's a strike. Where is she in the order, Tom? Hitting second. Gets a piece of this one up the left side. Loved by the third baseman, and they will get the lead runner. Nice play by Emma Murphy. So McCashlin reaches on the five to six force out. That's a gold glove play right there. If I had a gold glove in my back pocket, I'd let Emma take it home. Certainly is, as Megan Gorman will step in. 
Two on, two outs. She presents herself with an open stance. Gets a piece of this one. That's ripped up the middle. That's going to be trouble. Lead runner being waved around. One's going to score. It's 2 nothing, King Phillip. An RBI single for Megan Gorman. And now Faith Turanese, the left fielder, will step in. Another hard hit ball, Tom. Certainly was. Oh, there's a strike. Pulled the string on that one. She was way, way out in front of it. She could have almost swung twice. That one up high. Checking at first, nearly got her. When you're behind in the game, only bad things can happen with a back pick like that. Ball gets thrown in the right field and... Gets a piece of this one up the left side and that is foul. Nearly a diving catch there by uh, Emma Murphy. Good attempt at it. And this is hit in the air over to right center. That's going to get down. Here comes another King Phillip run. The throw in cut off by Emily Whalen, but it's three to nothing. I think if she let that ball through, there could have been a play at the plate. Very possible. So Megan Gorman moves up to third. Faith Turanisi over at first. Elise Pereira to the plate. There's a strike. And runner taking off. She is able to steal second. The throw actually went off of her. Good throw by Cedia though, nearly got her. I think you gotta eat that ball in that situation, Tom. Yeah, you do. So that ended up driving in the run as Gorman came around. Manu nice manufactured run there for King Phillip. That one up high. Well, things were going smoothly, but a little bit rocky now for Emily Good Whaley. block by Jill Cedia. And she's going to run anyway, throw to third, not in time. That was a very good block behind the plate, though. And she was working on that all winter. Much improved from last year. Swing strike. I'll make it two and two. This is a liner and caught by the shortstop for the third out of a long bottom of the third inning. King Phillip plates four runs. It is four to nothing as we head to the top of the fourth on H camp. Bottom, uh, top of the fourth inning, two, three, and four for the Hillers as Alyssa McIntyre takes a strike. Oh and one. Alyssa McIntyre, Katie Holly, Emma Murphy do up for Hopkinton. That's fouled away. Nice swing by Alyssa. The Hillers do have some com comeback uh, blood in their system. They were down, I think, at Millis 16 to 1 or 15 to 1 and came back to win at 16 15. Yep, they certainly do. As this is up the right side, three unassisted for the first out. Yeah, there's been games that have not looked great at all, and the Hillers just come back and End up pulling off a miracle, so still plenty of time left in this one, that's for sure. As Katie Holly steps in, bunts that foul. Well, I don't know about that, bunting with one out and being down by four runs. I don't think you're going to score a lot of runs playing base to base. I let her swing away. I agree. She's a number three hitter. And this is up the middle, glove by the shortstop. Throw to first a little high, but first baseman... Brooke Todd able to pull it down, six to three for the second out. And that'll bring up Emma Murphy. I 
get, but Murphy's slugging percentage is outstanding this year. Hasn't had a home run, I don't believe. That one low. One zero pitch. This is hit in the air over to right field and caught for the third out. One two three. They go to the bottom of the fourth. We go. It's four nothing. King Philip on H cam. Bottom of the fourth inning. Due up for King Philip. Six seven and eight. Jessica Bonner, Brooke Tott, and Brianna Lacey. They're one hitter short of batting around last inning, where they plated four runs. Big offensive explosion for King Phillip. Emily's gonna make a statement here, and come back and retire these kids. No base runners. As Jessica Bonner steps in. She flew out in her only at bat so far as that one's fouled off the backstop. Oh and one. Well, you knew it wasn't gonna be an easy afternoon against this very good King Phillip team. So is that pitch down low, one and one? So truthfully, you... truthfully, I thought it was gonna be an easy afternoon. But King Phillip is a regional school that's made up of uh, Rentham, Norfolk, and some other town I don't know. As this is lined up the middle, that gets into center field. A leadoff single. I'll bring up Brooke Tott, the first baseman. Whew, that ball was smoked. Well, you wonder what the leash is here in an elimination game, if perhaps maybe going to Emma Murphy is an option. Or excuse me, Katie Holly. Well, I guess Coach Soderberg has to look at it. We haven't done anything offensively, so what's the diff? And Emily Whalen's not throwing a terrible game, but of course in elimination games, sometimes it calls for drastic measures. The 0-1, and this is up the left side. It is gloved by Murphy. Throw to first, they get one. Five to three on the out. Jessica Bonner moves up to second. Stepping in to the batter's box is Brianna Lacey, the catcher. Lefty catcher steps in. She hit a double her last time up and scored a run last inning. Swing strike there, nasty breaking pitch by Whalen. Way out in front of that one. It looks like the King Philip Warrior team, whoever the hitting coach is, has most of the girls hitting with an open stance. They get an extra half second look at the pitch. Outside. That's working for him. Righty fouls that one away. Better pick up that ball quick, the ball head spin. The one, two. And this is up the left side. Glove by the shortstop. Throw to first. And it's dropped. Then picked up. But she is going to be safe. Not picked up in time by Bella Ansi. You just can't make mistakes like that at this point. So Brianna Lacey reaches on the error. And I'll bring up Nicole Carter. Uh, what's going to be the call here? They got a pinch runner in again. And Cedia was presented, it's presented with the same problem the last time they hit first and third with one out. Is she gonna throw through or is she gonna have the ball cut by the shortstop? Or is she gonna eat it? She eats it. Easy steal for Marjorie Guerrero. Gurrier, excuse me. Chance for two RBIs here. And this is hit in the air. Emily Whalen will glove it. Nice catch, two away. Warrior runners were like they were standing in cement. They didn't move a bit. Well, you know that's uh, a well-coached team when they're ready for that situation. As Sydney Phillips steps in. 
And this is up the left side, throw over to first, no problem, and that will retire the side. In the bottom of the fourth to the top of the fifth we go. It's 4-0 King Phillip on H Camp. Top of the fifth inning, King Phillip leading the Hillers 4-0. 5, 6, and 7 do up. Jill Cedia steps in. Elise Pereira deals, swinging strike. Keep your head in there, Jill. Don't yank it out. Square up that ball. Give it a ride. Well, Elise Pereira has pitched an absolute gem so far against a very good Hillers lineup. Gets a piece of this over to shallow left center, and it's caught by the shortstop. Some good range by Megan Gorman. Now bring up Bella Otzi, the first baseman. She singled her last time up down the left field between third and short. Well, with the uh, limited resources available to us today, you're getting the wide angle uh, camera shot. <laughs> that pitch is outside. Come on, you can work the clicker, <laughs> work the book, do the play-by-play -play and the camera. I got confidence. Line up and the pitch. That is fouled away. One and one. I think with two pitchers coming back next year, they've got a really, really good chance to make a run for a state championship. That pitch is low. Certainly, I mean, everybody on this team's coming back except Emma Murphy. And there's a lot of uh, talent down in the, on the JV level, I've been hearing. As this is up the left side, foul. Almost had a souvenir there, Larry. All right, my arms weren't long enough, though. I left them at home. Two and two. Good crowd on hand here today. Good turnout for both teams. There's strike three. Megan Sullivan will step in, the second baseman. Five, six, or excuse me, five strikeouts for Elise Pereira. Nope, I was right the first time with six strikeouts. Trying to pad her stats. I actually took one away. Okay. It's all right. As this is fouled away, 0 and 2. Souvenir of the ball game. Hillers baseball plays Monday against Duxbury, 4 p.m. game. That will be their first postseason game as they had the bye in the first round. Good eye there, 1 and 2. You going to do some promotion before that game on the uh, HCAM Channel 3 screen? There's been promotion all week long. You can catch all the Hopkins and Hillers playoff updates over at hcam.tv. Schedule of where every team's playing, results, and much more. Megan's putting up a good fight with Pereira. The one, two, swinging strike, and that'll retire the side on the top of the fifth. To the bottom of the inning we go. It's King Phillip leading Hopkinton four nothing on HCAM. Bottom of the fifth inning, and the first pitch is driven into right center. That'll drop down. Haley McCashlin aboard with a single. Start off the bottom of the fifth. That'll bring up Megan Gorham in the shortstop. Always a good sign when you can get the leadoff hitter going. Many things she can do now. She can swipe a bag. They can hit and run. It's sacrifice. That one's up high, runner from first, taking off the throw up, in, oh, I don't know about that. I really don't know about that. They called her safe, I disagree. The ump signaled though, I think maybe the foot was off, uh, Megan Sullivan's foot was off the bag perhaps. As this is ripped up the left side, just off the glove of Emma Murphy, that'll get in for a single. Maybe that was a payback call, but. I thought she was in there. You're going to have to go to the editing room and slow it down. Yeah, I thought so, too. As Faith Turanisi will step in the left fielder. But the ump was right on top of the action, so 
you got that one wrong. That's a some explaining on that one. As this is hit high in the air over to left field. It is caught, and both runners will stay put. Kristen McCluskey makes the play. They'll bring up Elise Pereira, the pitcher. She had a base hit last time up, didn't she? She's over two. Oh, maybe. As that is fouled away. Oh, and one. She doesn't have to hit. All she has to do is pitch. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. Happy to bring you Hopkinton Hillers playoff softball. Things not going the Hillers way right now as this bunt is fair. Throw to first is going to get by Bella Ansi. Now the lead runner is going to score. And maybe another runner is going to score as well. Two runs come in. And that ball is still all the way in right field. Going all the way to third is Elise Pereira. A huge error there. Heads up play by Katie Hawley. She ran all the way in from center field to cut that ball off. Six nothing, King Phillip. Elise Pereira reaches on the error and two run score. Second error by Hopkinton. And we'll have a pinch runner. Lily Rolf will pinch run. One out and a woman on third. Fly ball will score her. Hiller's infield playing in. Going to cut the run off at the plate. Will the Warriors play contact or wait for the ball to get through? Jessica Bonner, one for two, takes a strike. Last, last time they put on a contact play, Emily Whalen caught the runner halfway between home and third. And this is hit high in the air over to right field and caught. Lead runner is going to hold up. Good throw in by Jordan Chevery. That'll bring up Brooke Tott, the first baseman. Brooke is one for two today. There's a strike. This is up the middle, and that gets by the reach of Alyssa McIntyre. One run is in to score, an RBI single. Seven nothing, King Phillip. This game is not even an hour old. Seven nothing, two down. I'll bring up Brianna Lacey, the catcher. Hit in the air over to left field and caught for the third out of the inning. But King Phillip plates three more runs. It's seven nothing as we head to the top of the sixth on each cam. Seven nothing lead for King Phillip as we get ready for the top of the sixth inning. Two up for the Hillers, eight, nine, and one. Jordan Chevery, Kristen McCluskey, and Emily Whalen. To face Elise Pereira. This is hit in the air over to center field and caught by the second baseman, a collision between the center fielder and second baseman, but no harm done as they laugh it off. Little hugging going on out there. Girls are always good sports. If that was a guy to guy play, that would have been a train wreck. <laughs> good range by the second baseman, Haley McCashlin, as Kristen McCluskey will step in. I just missed. One and oh. The bunt 
It is fair, picked up by the catcher, throw to first. Not in time. Good bunt and speed up the line by McCluskey. That was a very close play. It certainly was. That'll bring up Emily Whaley. Very nice throw by Lacey. Kristen's run means nothing. This is up the right side. That'll get through for a hit. And the Hillers have something brewing. Two on, no outs. Or excuse me, one out. They'll bring up Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop. Well, you gotta get the offense going sooner or later. Looks like the Hiller girls got a magic hat going around the dugout. Lucky hat. Up the left side, gloved by the third baseman. She'll step on the third base bag to get the lead runner. So Alyssa McIntyre reaches on the five unassisted force out. Whalen up to second, two on two outs. Katie Holly to the plate. They are playing her to pull. And this is up the middle, that'll get through. Emily Whalen being waved around. The throw home, it's gonna be close, and it'll get by the catcher. The run does score. It's a seven to one King Phillip lead. A nice piece of hitting by Katie Holly, an RBI single. She advances the second on the throw in. That was a great piece of base running by Emily Whalen. Certainly was. You gotta be aggressive, can't hesitate. Just gotta go right in and try to score that run. I'll bring up Emma Murphy. I don't know whether the catcher. Uh, somebody, someone get hurt out there? And now the umpires are discussing it. Whether it was block plate or whether she didn't, she didn't slide. The catcher dropped the ball, so I don't think anything should be changed here. Umpires like to insert themselves into the game sometimes, Tom. That is true. The throw got by the catcher. King Phillip coach is arguing uh, that was plate interference. I think that's the. I know that guy. I used to play softball with that guy way back in the day. But you know, you're up 7 1. Calm down. <laughs> really, Gino? Come on. I don't think I've ever seen Coach Soderberg argue with an umpire. As this is up the middle, over to the second baseman, throw to first, they get the out. But the Hillers do play to run. It's 7-1 as we head to the bottom of the six on each can. 7-1 King Phillip as we get ready for the bottom of the sixth. Emily Whalen back out there for another inning. And she's pitched a relatively good game, but there's been a couple of really costly errors by the Hillers, including the one last inning, which allowed both runs to score. So that error would actually make those runs unearned. The first two runs of the last inning as Nicole Carter, the right fielder, will step in. That is low. Did you give that error to Onzi or Joe Cedia on Cedia. that throw? Cedia, the throw was way too much mustard. That one low, 2-0. I mean, that was just pretty much a straight out throw in a right field. Rare mistake by CD though. She's a very good catcher. Look forward to watching her the next couple of years. Hit over to the third baseman, throw to first, no problem, five to three. So I'll bring up Sydney Phillips. I don't think I've seen Emma, make, Emma Murphy make an error all year. She is automatic out there. That is up high. I'm trying to send Emma Murphy something telepathically. Try out for your college softball team. And this is up the left side, gloved by the shortstop, throw to first, no problem. Safe. Really? 
Wow. Okay. What what are your thoughts on that one? She was safe. All right. Guess the throw uh, didn't get there in time. Great speed up the line by Phillips as Haley McCashlin will step in. Well, that was an example of me looking at the camera too quickly. You got eyes everywhere. Bunt, and that is going to go foul. What a smart play by Emma Murphy. I think she started to get a little worried that it wasn't going to roll the right way. I would have booted that ball out of bounds. But Emma so nicely picked it up in foul territory, so the runner has to return. But I don't know about that call, bunting up 7-1. And this is up the right side. Whalen gloves it, flip to first. No problem. Two away, Sydney Phillips up to second. Megan Gorman, the shortstop, will step in. Two down, runner will be off on contact. Like and that. this is up the left side, that'll drop in for a fair ball. Here comes another King Phillip run. The throw in's a good one, but not in time. And now the lead runner is going to advance over to third. So moving all the way to third on that one is Megan Gorman. Ends up being an RBI single. She advanced two bases on the throw in and the misfire on the ball handling after the throw in as Faith Turanisi, the left fielder, will step in. Well, I thought Emma should have cut that ball off, but if she was 10 feet tall, she wouldn't have got to it. Would have prevented the runner from second to go to third. And this is up the left side. Emma Murphy to first, no problem, and that will retire the side in the bottom of the sixth. The Hillers down to their final three outs, trailing eight to one on each camp. Top of the seventh inning. As Jill Cedia will step in. Five, six, and seven. Five, six, and seven. Cedia Auntie Sullivan. A pitch up high. Hillers down to their final three outs. Well, things aren't looking too good for the Hillers, trailing eight to one, but Larry, it's been a fantastic season for this young team. Yes, it has. The girls have done themselves proud. They've done their school proud. They their moms have. and dads proud and done themselves proud, so and nothing be no, no reason to hang their head at all. I'd say they by far exceeded expectations. No question. I think the coach mentioned that in his last interview with you. There's some little hiccups, but they settled down and some leadership from Emma Murphy, Katie Hawley, and Emily Whalen. And next season will certainly be a lot of fun with the majority of this roster returning. A pitch inside, three and one. But there's still hope here. It ain't over till it's over. Who said that anyway? I said it, Larry. Oh, uh, it's Yogi Berra. That is true. As Cedia does get the walk. Heather Sivo will go in to run for Cedia. Bella Ansi will step in. Her brother Dante just graduated last week. Bella's been pretty good with the bat as of late. 377 on the season overall for the junior. Words of encouragement by Jill Cedia to Bella, Bella Onsi. Just make contact, I think she's saying. Good sophomore leadership. Absolutely. She's been great behind home plate. As this is up the middle, bobbled by the pitcher, and everyone's going to be safe. That's a base hit all the way. I'm giving that a hit, absolutely. That was some power up the middle. Two on, no outs. Megan Sullivan stepping in. No chances on the bases. Nobody's run means anything right now. Strike one. Jordan Chevery do up next. Two. 
swinging strike. Nice pitch. Oh and two. That was a mismatch there. Got to start a bat a little bit early. That one outside. You know she's going to throw a fastball. Just start your swing a little earlier. And this is up the middle, handled by the pitcher, throw to third for one, now to first. And not in time to first, but they do get the lead runner. So Megan Sullivan reaches on the one to five force out. Sivo was retired. That'll bring up Jordan Chevery. They can just turn this lineup over. Jordan can do something. Bring up Emily Whalen. Excuse me. Krista McCluskey. Right back to the pitcher. And that was a good snag by Elise Pereira. Two away. Now Krista McCluskey will step in. Hillers down to their final out. Well, Larry, it's been a great softball season. Of course, we've got Hillers baseball coming up. And believe it or not, Ashland Legion baseball starts next week. Of course, that could be delayed by the MIAA playoffs. Well, Holliston got bumped out. That is true. They actually probably have enough players with just the Holliston guys. Coach Johnson will play with eight. Down their last strike. Well, you got to have no at least nine. The 0-2. This is fouled away. Oh, my goodness. Somebody's windshield. Almost. Down to the last strike. This will be a memorable year for these girls, for sure. As it should be. Up the middle, glove by the second baseman, throw to first, and that is going to do it. The Hopkinton Hillers fall to King Phillip, eight to one, but what a tremendous season for this young team. Certainly a lot of fun to watch. King Phillip scores eight runs on 11 hits, commits no errors. The Hillers score one run on four hits and commit two errors. Elise Pereira, the winning pitcher for King Phillip and the player of the game as she just pitched a gem today for the King Phillip Warriors. Congratulations to King Phillip on advancing in the MIAA playoffs, but certainly nothing to have your head down about if you're the Hopkinton Hillers. This is a very young team and they exceeded all expectations and just had a tremendous season and they were a lot of fun to watch all year long. Congratulations to head coach Scott Soderberg and the Hopkinton Hillers softball team. It was truly a fun season and next year is going to be a whole lot of fun with the majority of this roster coming back. For my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. The final score for the final time, King Phillip takes down Hopkinton 8-1 in the South Division I bracket of the MIAA playoffs. Up next for us, Hillers Baseball coming up on Monday. Stay tuned to HCAMP for all your Hopkinton Hillers sports. Enjoy the rest of your day, ladies and gentlemen, and we will talk to you again soon. And thanks for tuning in all season long to Hopkinton Hiller Softball on HCAM.